Thanks for tuning in to the SB Unit demo series on AgileSOC.com. Uh, this is part one in our series where we help people get started with the SB Unit test framework. I'm Neil Johnson. So in this first part, we're going to help people uh, with just the basics of downloading and driving SB Unit. And to do that, we're going to go through a few quick steps. Uh, first, we're going to go to SourceForge and use Git to retrieve the uh, SB Unit code. Uh, then we're going to set up the SB Unit environment variables so we can drive uh, the scripts. Um, then we're going to start a class under test uh, and generate a corresponding unit test file. From there, we're going to build and run the SB Unit framework and take a look at the results. Uh, then we are going to add a uh, one failing uh, and one passing test uh, to take a look and see what, what those results look like. Uh, let's get started. So first of all, we're going to go to uh, SourceForge, uh, and that's where we're going to get SVUnit. So at SourceForge, we're going to go to uh, slash projects slash SVUnit. And that is going to take us to the project page. Uh, now we're going to click here on the big blue button. Uh, to um, take us to the view of the code repository. And in this window, or on this page, we're going to copy this command here. That is the git command to uh, clone the repository. So now we're going to switch to a terminal. Uh, we're going to see where we are here, SVUnit demo. We're going to paste that command in here. It's going to ask us for a password. Uh, and there we go. We have cloned SVUnit. So if I ls this directory, uh, now we've got a directory called SVUnit code. So we've got a local version of SVUnit to work with now. So next let's set up the environment variables. Um, there's two environment variables that we're going to have to set up. One is called SVUnit install, uh, and the other is to add the uh, bin directory in SVUnit install to our path. So to do that, we're going to go into SVUnit. We'll take a look at a file called setup.bash. And this is where you can see uh, the two variables, variables being set. First of all is uh, SVUnit install. Um, and next we're going to add the SVUnit install bin directory to our path. So we can uh, do that by sourcing the setup.bash. And now let's take a look at our environment variables to see what has been set up. So that's our SVUnit install directory, and that's where I've put it. And we'll take a look at our path. And we can see we've got SVUnit demo, uh, SVUnit code bin directory. So that's our, um, the environment is now uh, set up. Now we're going to be able to uh, run scripts. Uh, and to do that, we're going to start using SVUnit now. So we're going to go to a new directory. Uh, create a little project. We're going to call it demo. And we're going to go into demo. And we are going to start a class under test. And we are going to call it dot dot sv. And this is going to be very simple. Um, it's going to be a class that doesn't do anything. Empty class, uh, but we've got one anyway, and it's called dot. And we're going to close that. That's our design under test. And now what we're going to do is generate a unit test file uh, for that class that we just created. So to do that, we are going to run a script called create unit test. And uh, we're going to create it for dot dot sv. 
we'll ls this directory. Now we've got a file called dot unit test dot sv. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Um, this is a template for unit test, and you can see. Uh, there are a number of things in here. There's a class with a constructor. Uh, there is a method called setup. There's a method called run test, uh, and another method called teardown. Uh, so this is functional right now, but it doesn't do anything because we haven't added anything to it. So this is just a template. Uh, but this is still this can still be useful for us. Um, now we have a class under test, we've got a unit test file, now we're going to create a make file that we can use to create and run the SVUnit framework. And to do that we are going to run a script called create SVUnit. Uh, we'll run that, and it's telling us that it's going to write a make file for us. So now what we can do is run the make file to create the SVUnit framework. And the target that we're going to build to do that is called svunittop.sv. Uh, so we can run that. You can see here it has created a file called uh, .home and Johnson svunit demo demo test suite.sv. That's a test suite file. Uh, you can see another file here called um, testrunner.sv and finally you can see a file called uh, svunittop.sv uh, let's take a look at this directory so there they are and that is the three layers of hierarchy uh, in the svunit framework the unit tests um, the test suite and the test runner and then the, the SVUnit top is just a top level module that ties everything all together. Uh, so now we can actually just simulate the framework um, by saying make. And what this does out of the box, it uh, in fact regenerates the, uh, these files and then it will come back with an error that says uh, svunit sim command line not defined. So what this does is it, it creates the framework, uh, but it doesn't know anything about um, how to run a simulator yet, because the svunit is, is, is simulator independent. So we can set that up by, you know, I'm going to run um, VCS, uh, we use modules, so I'm going to load the VCS module first, so I have access to the simulator. Then I'm going to edit the file called svunit.make uh, and in that file I'm going to set a variable called uh, simexe, so the simulator executable. I'm going to say vcsi, that's what, what we're going to use. And I am going to include a make file called vcs.make and in there um, that comes with the comes in the bin directory or comes as part of the svunit um, uh, package from the repository and that's just a predefined um, command line executable just the basic to be able to run uh, to be able to run the framework out of the box so let's close this and let's hit make again and now you can see the uh, the framework actually running here. So you can see that we've simulated something here. Um, we can see that we have a unit test uh, path that is reporting a pass. That's this line. You can see that we have a test suite that's reporting a pass, and you can see that we have a test runner that's reporting a pass. So all three levels in our hierarchy here out of the box are all reporting a pass. So, now, uh, let's get into actually writing a test here, because what we've run here is just the framework out of the box, but we haven't added anything, so, so nothing is really happening here. So, to add a test, we're going to look at our unit test file that we already uh, generated. 
we are going to go down to the bottom here and we are going to add a method called my test. We are going to add a uh, some logging that says I am running my test and we are going to have a test that fails. So this is the first test that will, right? It's called my test, and all it's gonna all it's gonna do uh, is um, uh, output this line to a log, or standard out in this case, uh, and it's gonna fail because we've used this macro that says fail if one. So that's our test, and now to be able to run the test, we have to invoke it in this method called run test. So we're going to add an invocation of my test to run test, and now we're going to close this, and we'll run it and see what happens. You can see the the uh, the framework is simulated again. We can go in here and we can see that our log, uh, in our log, um, we can see this message that is running dot dot my, uh, dot colon colon my test. And then here we can see that the fail if one macro that we put in there um, has actually caused our test to fail. And that is an error here. And later on, you can see that our unit test um, class is reporting a fail. Uh, and you can see that the unit test suite is also reporting a fail and the test runner is reporting a fail. So here we have a failing uh, SV unit is, call, it is, uh, is telling us that we have a failing uh, test suite. Now we can go back to our unit test file and we'll go back down to the bottom and we will take a look at what a passing test looks like. So instead of failing if one, now we're going to fail if zero. So this is all of a sudden now a passing test. So we'll close this and we'll run it again. And now we can see that we are running my test. Uh, no failure is reported. We can see that the dot unit test uh, is reporting a pass. Likewise for the test suite. Likewise for the test runner. So SVUnit is now telling us that uh, that everything is fine uh, with what we're running. So that's as far as we'll go here. Uh, just to do a little review of what we were what we've done, we used Git to retrieve the SVUnit source code uh, from SourceForge. Um, we used the setup.bash script to set up the uh, SVUnit environment variable and path. Uh, we started a simple class under test that we left empty and we generated a corresponding unit test file. Then we built uh, and ran the SVUnit framework just with the out-of-the-box configuration and took a look at the results with the three levels of, of SVUnit um, hierarchy with the unit test, the test suite, and the test runner. Uh, and then the last thing we did, we added a failing test uh, to our unit test class. Uh, and then we added a passing test and took a look at the results. So, that takes us to the end of part one uh, of the SVUnit demo series on AgileSOC.com. I'm Neil Johnson. Thanks for watching.